day, gang. It is October 30th. Happy Halloween coming up. I know it's a little bit of a different Halloween this year. Um, our community is having a socially distanced dog parade where the neighbors are dressing up their pooches <laughs> in Halloween costumes and doing like this big like spaced event where they're going around to the houses in the neighborhood so like nobody has to have contact so it's really cool like the kids get um something going on this year and then they're doing like a big like projection of a movie so that will be cool i'm glad that they all came together and did that so hopefully you guys have a really nice enjoyable fun weekend even if it's a little bit different than normal So the market itself has been a little scary for the bulls this week, hasn't it? We're going to start by taking a look at what's going on in the NASDAQ and the S&P here. So I have got the micro up and got all of these. Or as teaching executions, I keep forgetting to save this and to remove these. <laughs> let's get these off the screen there we go so here's our weekly of what we're looking at and let me add a little bit more data here as well I guess we won't add more data on the micro will we but what we can see is that we've got that main extension that we were talking about in the overall NASDAQ with the two wave move up here where it's kind of tilted correction in the middle came into a resistance pretty sharp drop but it recovered really well too and at this point what we were looking at was for the market to start to go into a widening up zone now when you got a really strong move in the market that widening up zone can take um basically three formations so you might see it widening up by going to like some slightly higher highs and kind of creating that roundedness going on. You can see it happening where it might come in and kind of look like a slow correction and then go and do a bigger correction like that with a shallow avalanche. And then, you know, sometimes it will just go into a range. So you'll get that and then they'll just, you know, go back and forth here for a while before it eventually decides to break out of that range. So those are like the three main ways that we see widening up zones happen. And as it's going into one of those levels, there's not really a great, like surefire way to say which one of those three is going to happen. A lot of times it just comes down to what's happening on the smaller time frames, like what's going on with the momentum shifting as it does hit those levels. So if we drop down and we look at the daily chart, what we saw here happening is that this had a little bit of rounding when it pulled back to that first support there back from July. So it hit the early August zone really quickly, it shifted momentum. And that allowed this to pop. So since it wasn't like a typical V bottom, a lot of times that pop could go like a little bit more than halfway up. It could create a 2T formation if the momentum is, you know, the same. Sometimes it will go and it will do three waves and do slightly higher high. Of course, usually we look for two. Since the second wave was stronger than the first, up until right about here, there was still the potential that that could do a shift like this and do a correction where it would kind of tilt that momentum and then bring in further selling. So we didn't really know when we were first coming into that support level, which way this was going to manage to you know, react off of that support level. So oftentimes when your second move is stronger than your first, and this is a time correction, and then this leads to a price correction, 
this move here can take a number of paths as well. It's a little bit easier to predict when your move up comes like this and you get a price correction and then a strong move because then it's more likely that even if it does like a time correction, you're still going to get more upside. You'll still get higher highs. It might not be like a strong surge, but it could be. But your success on a buy at that support level is pretty good. So here it was a little bit dif different. And so when we were looking into things going into last week, what we were seeing was that the market was congesting along that level. And we were seeing the development of these smaller short patterns, but the overall bias kept focusing on the downside. So when this time development here to here got to be about the same, that's where if this was going to pop, it should have done it. And really what we should have seen here is a stronger move off of there, then like a little base or so, and then seeing that go up. But instead, as it came into our resistance here, you can see that this popped quickly here for the first wave up, but then it shifted momentum. And that led to a really strong short pattern. So by this point, let me put our time development on there so you guys can see that. So here's where we kind of got it from going from the lows to lows. So that's, or the highs to lows. So that's like the first spot for our time development. And then it could go out to like where it actually started to break, which was here. So that's like the last potential spot that it could break higher. So when it broke lower right at that very last potential place, that's a key short development there. And then the momentum was so extremely strong that when we came into support, it didn't really round off enough to get things going. The drop down, I don't really want to five minute let's make this like um look at a 30 here so here's where it was coming into that support so what you can see is there's a little bit of like one two three action down here but it was just so tight and so small compared to that bigger momentum move just really couldn't get going so we were looking at you know possibilities for like momentum reversal pluses things like that but again when it popped the momentum shifted the same way that we saw earlier so it still kept that bias on the downside now what i was looking for in here was something where we could get um maybe like a, a bigger like bear flag or something it actually did a stronger second wave up here again so this is our first wave this becomes our second wave with a one two three but again it got to you know key points where this needs to hold and not do a pullback of more than a third if it's going to really turn around we would see like a handle for a cup with handle happening here and it just could not go into that. So even by falling here, this is another short pattern right there, right as that continuation breaks. This was a 100% extension exactly on the Dow. We were looking at that intraday yesterday. It was really strong resistance coming back into uh, resistance levels. The Dow has been really good to follow lately, you guys. It's been kind of like, um, it's been a lot smoother, so it's easier to like predict things. We've had like really strong intraday patterns coming off of it. So that helped me with a lot of my trades this week, just to stay focused, because if things looked kind of messy on the NASDAQ, they were really clear. 
when I would flip over and look at the Dow. Now, what we've got going on here, I'm going to go back here right now, is that we have a little bit of shifting momentum again as it's coming into the support from back in September. But there's not enough to really give it like too much of a bullish bias. We do have a, a nice little um, buy that took place here intraday with a, a momentum reversal plus, like right as we were going into class. But on this larger time frame, there's not really anything to suggest that this might, you know, really have a good bounce here because it could easily go into another base like that and fall again where it treats this as a price correction and then you could get a time correction. Now it would take most of the day for that to develop, but it is certainly a, a huge possibility. And of course we're heading into election week up ahead too. So we wanna be a lot more cautious. I saw like Ninja Trader was showing increased margins. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, <laughs> that can be really, really dangerous, you guys. The, the best thing to do is just kind of sit aside, you know? Donna, you're in this. I know this was a really good setup, right? Here's a, you can see it on the five second chart here. So on the 30 second, here's the momentum reversal plus. So you get your momentum reversal portion and then here's the plus part. And then it kind of did like a third extra one. And then the Phoenix, how beautiful is that? That's like really, really nice here. Nice drop in volume. You got your two little triangles here in the Phoenix with the volume dropping. And that's exactly what you want to see within a Phoenix. I know it's about as close to textbook as we get. So also notice one, two, three. We also had that shift as well. It's really easy to see it on a 3000 tick chart too. Donna says she had the 4000 up. I had the 3000, so it's basically the same thing. Let me show you. There's a 1,000 on this one, 8,000 here. You can see it on the 8,000 too. So what we've got is the really strong move here bounces, and then you've got one, two, and momentum shifting, and then three. So right with that um, wave count development that we've been working on all week as well. So first, you know, resistance zone in here. And to get this to bounce really well, you would want this to not really react much there. And if it does, what it does is it projects out your channel longer. So it can shift it from trying to do a bounce pattern to going into more of a time correction. So this ends up being price correction and then that could go into more of a time correction if it can't give us some continuation here. And it might be a little tricky, you guys, because the S&P did hit a measured move here and it's not really as strong a momentum as I would love to see. Let me show you the S&P on this. You can see how that could easily go into more of a time correction here. So S&P, look at this. See that bounce? The second wave is slower. You got your first one up. And then it did kind of a little baby inverse head and shoulders while the NASDAQ was also doing its Phoenix. When it popped, it shifted. And in those really strong ones, we won't see this happening. If it does shift, it will shift as like a tilted continuation. It'll break this high, not break the low of the channel. It'll break that high and gain momentum like that. And that's just not happening. So we are still seeing, you know, some creeping up, but I wouldn't be surprised if it does get stuck. Our NASDAQ is kind of leading there on the strength department. I want to show you guys the Russell here too today. So here's our daily on the Russell. And notice that after our two main legs up here, we've been dealing with this momentum shifting on the Russell. It's kind of not great as a momentum reversal because we don't have like those solid Vs and inverse Vs. It spiked really fast there into that third high. 
and ideally you'd want to see it a little bit slower as it's coming up into there. So I'm wondering if that might try to go into like a slower move or something like this here over the next couple of weeks because it's not really great for a bigger reversal pattern but it is still showing us that we do have a good deal of resistance. Um, let's see here, you guys. Oh, let me show you that smaller time frame on the NASDAQ. So here you can see the NASDAQ is kind of slowing a little bit as we're coming up here too. And again, kind of doing a little bit more momentum shift that's indicative that we don't have like a huge, strong bullish bias on this. What's really nice here is that before this did go though, look at this smaller little inverse head and shoulders in here. So it kind of went into this mega phoenix here with our widening up, but then it did that smaller little phoenix within it, which really helped get that going as well. Um, let's see here. What would you guys like me to pull up to look at here today? How would I manage a position on this? A lot of times what I'll do is, if things aren't quite working like the way I would ideally want them to go, I'll do some more advanced trade management on it where I will, for example, even on smaller time frames, I'll go and like take partials off, like here's a hundred tick. You can see it was trying to do like a little baby momentum reversal on, on things like that. You know, so I'll take partials off like that. And then if it goes and gives like another little setup, then I'll, I'll just get back in. So I'll kind of do like that, playing it back and forth. Where if I get like those three highs, I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna take some off. Or if I see it, I get two T. And then if there's like another little add spot, I'll go and add some back in. So as things are coming into resistance levels, I might go and get a little bit more aggressive. That's what I did on this one too. And just kind of play it back and forth. I haven't done as much ATM on this as I normally would. I didn't do it over here, but I did over here. And then, um, for example, you know, two waves again, good spot, take some off again. And then just kind of move my stops up, like as things get closer to where I don't want to give too much back, then I'll move them up to under like these little baby lows. So sometimes that can take me out if something really does keep going. But for the most part, it, it saves my butt and I can always get back in if I see a better setup happening again. So on something like that's a 2B, you guys, our main target that we go for before we would see much of a correction would be a break in the previous high. So you might get a little stall at the 76.4, but which is what happened here, which is why I did some of a sh um, some protection on this trade at that point. Because if it goes and hits that without any shift, it's usually going to break through that previous high really easily. But if it does shift a little bit into it, it can be harder to do it. So that's why I did partials and then I added them back in when it went and tried again. And usually what I'm doing is I'm kind of like trading it like it's going to go into like a megaphone, but it might not do like a megaphone like fully. It might just stall there and go and continue in a really strong market. But I kind of look at, hey, how much did that break under the previous low? And then add that kind of to the top. And then here, of course, we've got that little smaller measured move as that zone is happening too. So that tells me this is, you know, probably going to stall it. It's the third move up on the S&P now too. Let me show you that S&P again, you guys. So remember what we were talking about when we first started class, time correction, and then it started a price correction. This was that do or die spot, right? exactly like the template that I drew for you. So on that daily chart, what we saw happening is that the NASDAQ went into that range like that and then broke down. 
So in this case, this is a really good example of where it can go and offer a continuation, but usually that continuation will be slower than your previous moves, and that's what's happening here. I can go down to, this is a 30 second, but I can show you like how that little smaller action shifted right there. So it ended up with a two wave correction right here, and then it broke that channel to the upside and then kind of confirmed here. And now you've got one, two, three. So you have the smaller wave extension here too. One, two, three. So one, two, three, and one, two, three. So at this point, you know, things could widen up. They could start to go and shift and do a bigger correction. It could go into a longer base again. You're just going to expect that most of the time, this is going to correct more than it did each of these previous two times. And if it does try to go, like let's say it goes like this long and then tries to break again after it's already had two corrections the same amount of time, it's more likely that's gonna be a trap. So we'll have time to see how this ends up playing out before the end of our session here probably. Um, but let's go look at some of those other markets here as that is doing that. So I'll pull up some of these other ones that you guys asked about. Amazon. Yeah, we got all those earnings. So to Amazon, close this. And then I got T. Look at that, it's starting to do it. So what we're expecting on like that, um, like the five second, you know, <laughs> You've got your three waves move here, and it's trying to go for a bigger correction with like how long that time correction is taking. That's the same thing you would expect on a bigger scale with one, two, three. So these are the same. So now you would expect this one to generally be a longer time development. So if that does try to go the same time development, then it's gonna probably be a trap. All right, let's see here, AT&T, daily time frame, mm. weekly. You got find a good support here, but I would only consider this like one main leg down on the monthly. So you have potential, it could do a check mark. With these two lows so close together, usually that low is going to try to hold. Um, kind of can depend on how how fast it hits. So if it hits with the same speed or slower than the first one, it will usually hold. So I'd say you have a good support level here, but you would want to wait for patterns for any on uh, actual confirmation on this. And I don't really see anything developing here for a pattern yet. You might have like a little Phoenix intraday, but this still seems really steep, like it could come down and trap again. That Phoenix is, doesn't really look great. It's like really steep up here coming off of that low. So with our moves down here, this might go into like a 2B or something like that on the intraday. But I don't really see another good pattern on this. Maybe. 2P.
Mm, this is probably going to take out that previous daily low here. Or intraday low, rather. Our daily looks like really good exhaustion. These, they tend to not be able to go past that third day. When it does go like three days, you'll usually get a stall. So like here, look at this one, two, three, stall. One, two, three, stall. So you got your one, two, and then it tried to do three. You got pretty comparable, you know, impulse move action on that. So I would consider this to be pretty exhausted up there. This will be where you've got one of those widening up zones now. So those three ways that this can play out that we talked about earlier, any of those can happen here. So you'd have to look at just what's going on on the intraday timeframes. And this 30 minute looks lower. I mean, it could go into like a megaphone eventually, but the 30 minute right now still looks lower. So I would consider it to try to break this previous slow zone, but probably stay with slower momentum. But it's not something I would look anytime soon for more upside right now. ALGN. Are you still in that NASDAQ, Donna? A little bit. Yep, same here. Kind of getting like, where I think I'm going to take it off though. Right here. Hold on one second, you guys. We got like a um, third shift up on our 200 tick chart here. So it's kind of doing like a 2T. So I'm just, just took it off here. So I'll focus a little better. Um, let's see here. Got... ALGN, hmm. I don't know, you guys. It's funny, it's acting like a buyout stock. <laughs> um, Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I would do too much with this. It kind of looks like it could creep back in and fill that gap. Like you could even get like things like that happening. And then it could go and do buy setups again, but I almost wouldn't want anything as a swing trade or investment until it has like a nice two way correction. So something lasting at least this long. This is a 240, let me show you it on the daily. So if it could go like, you know, like that or something, but yeah, I don't know. Generally something like this, I would just day trade it. can see intraday you've got this tilted avalanche in play so the main concern is does this go into one two three so here's your initial move down kind of stalls there here's your like head and shoulders and then two wave correction in here pops it's right at the lower end of the channel so if this kind of hugs that channel that could break down 
Oh, nice, Donna. Donna said she used her duct tape. She made it to her first 4K tick target. Congratulations. I can show you guys that NASDAQ here again in a second. So I should post a chart for you too. Oops, that is not the NASDAQ. I'll give it a second here. You could use either one of those lows with the uh, retracement. You can see it's hitting right at 38.2%. And look at that right in there. That little 2T. I wasn't on this small of a time frame. Like I said, what I was on a 200 on the NQ is what I was looking at. So when I saw those two waves up there, that's what I did to get out of it. I didn't see the, the smaller action that was shifting it. So my exit, you guys, was right in here. But if you look at this, see that momentum? A little slower here, a little stronger here. It probably would push. And of course, I didn't have my fib lines up there on there either. So those would get you just a little bit more, about another five points out of it. But let me show you that bigger wave count here as this is coming out of it. So we were looking at some of the smaller ones, and then you've got those are your main three here. One, two, three. So this was that last resistance where it had the two wave measured move. and kind of had like a little third move there. And then this is your third one. So strongest, weaker, weaker, and there you go. All right, let's take a look at a couple of extra things. What else do you guys want to see? What happened on the ES? Can I show that one again? Yeah, I'll show you guys what that did. Where's my ES hiding? I'll just put the micro here for a second. Let's see. Oh, there it is. So see it held that third high and look at it. See how I tried to go again, like right at that same time development and what did I say? I said it would probably be a what? A trap. Yep, exactly. And that's exactly what happened, trapped them. So you're not really counting this as, as a fourth move, you guys. Just counting that as a trap. So one, two, three. And then there's the trap. You even got a little baby momentum reversal right there at the high. I love that you guys get to see some of this actually actually playing out live. There's the momentum reversal. One, two, three. see here. Did I miss anybody's questions on anything? You guys don't have a lot of them that you want to look at today, do you? Do I use Ninja for equities? No, I don't, Ulysses. IBM Trade Station. Can we look at the timing on the Mega Phoenix that Donna took? Um, Donna, did you post your chart? Oh, she's still working on her chart, Karan. She'll post it there in um in the forum. 
I can show you guys what I did on like entry on it. I didn't drop down to a smaller time frame, so I just used what was going on on the on the bigger ones. Let me show you. Basically, that zone of congestion, I had um, larger time frame charts up, so I just used a break in that larger con that congestion. Let's see here. I guess I had the micro. That was probably load faster, right? Well, while that is loading, let me show you Amazon. So again, Amazon is in a widening up zone up here. So you can see it's going with a little bit of an avalanche there on that daily time frame. So there's still more room for this to pull down. Generally speaking, this overall channel here will remain wider than what you've got going on here. It's just going to require you to focus on what's happening on the smaller time frames now intraday. So this, I mean, I could so easily see that coming down into like there kind of holding like the channel like that. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. This is what I used, you guys. So you could actually have gone in and in like the the two ways within there, you could get tighter entries on this than I did. I guess I'll show you a smaller time frame, but easier to see it. So here was that kind of congestion here for the, the Phoenix. That was the um, ES that it was showing, even though I said NQ up here, that was the ES. But here's the NQ. So is this, but you could have used this to wave in there as your smaller entry. Probably easier to see it on the micro, but here's that two wave on the NQ. So usually what I'll do is if this has like a two wave here, then I'll just kind of use a um, market order above the channel. But if I miss it and it pops up really nice after the two wave correction and get a little stall, I'll just use that to buy in. But in this case, I didn't get it until here. So I did have a much wider stop than usually. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna show you guys is what's going on here. Now, look at that. So there's the 2T, and then there's our correction. So it held exactly at that resistance zone with that trap, and now we're back into this congestion support. So this is a beautiful example of trend development, you guys. You can definitely take this and do a screenshot of this and keep it in your records. Very, very, very good example. All right, folks. So if you have any more questions, let me know. We can look at anything else here. If not, we'll wrap this up. And I will move on to my next lesson of the day, teaching my kiddo his Spanish. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, there you go, bueno. <laughs> Adios. Yeah, that's about the level of Spanish that we're on right now.
Adios. Uno, dos, tres. He can get to 100. So, you know, we're making progress. <laughs> we'll look at RRC here for Douglas. <laughs> Speak now or forever hold your peace. He you popped that one in just in time. <laughs> Longer time frame. Ooh, let's see here. Hey, would you look at that? Same momentum shift. He even had it up here, too. And then our pop, which is exactly like our reversal on the ES in today. So what happened is, you know, on this pop, this isn't really that much when you're looking at like this overall trend here. There isn't that much of a retracement to allow this to really sustain a reversal. So what we would have wanted to have seen was at least coming up halfway and preferably a little bit more with a pretty steady trend off of that low. So my concern is that this pop isn't sustainable. Um, the only thing that could really get this going, I think, in, in my book would be if this does go into like a mega phoenix down here and then tries to go into a one, two, three. That would be the only thing that would really kind of try to get this going again. Otherwise, I don't see any chance for this easily longer term. Um, what you could see happening is that you've got one and two legs, so it could really easily go down for a third, and then you might get, you know, some, some of those like penny stock bounce type of moves again. I think that is a big risk, especially since you're about that same time development out now. Guys, see that? Yeah, so definitely, he's a lot more caution on that. Is anyone trading on election night? I don't know if I will or not. Is anyone drinking on election night? <laughs> Probably. Uh, not me. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Pizza. <laughs> I'll be eating pizza. All right. Well, we'll see who shows up on Wednesday morning. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day and enjoy your weekend.